Once most children learn to speak, it can be difficult to get them to be quiet. But for an unfortunate few, just trying to say a single word in public can be a terrifying ordeal. These children aren't shy. They suffer from a rare and bizarre anxiety disorder called selective mutism. Rob, are you stuck? Left untreated, they can grow up to become isolated adults. We follow two children over the course of a year to see if their parents can find a solution which will free them from their silent world. Madeline Rains is five years old. Daddy! Yeah? At home with her family, she's a happy little chatterbox. Who's there? Mr. Oh, Madeline. Madeline at home is just absolutely bursting with life. She is full of fun. She, she doesn't really stop talking. She's got something to say on anything and everything. She just is just so full of life and it is so frustrating that people don't see that Madeline. Away from home, hardly anyone ever hears Madeline's voice. What school do you go to? How do they feel there, Madeline? Good? Do you want to come and have a look at me in the mirror? Would you like a lolly afterwards? What's your favourite colour? See you at school yet? Madeline suffers from a rare condition called selective mutism. Can you talk? Can you talk to mummy and daddy? Is it you don't want to talk? It's selective because although she can be very talkative, in front of strangers she becomes so anxious that she can't say anything. <laughs> Madeline started in nursery over two years ago and has just moved up to primary school. None of the teachers or pupils have ever heard her voice. Good morning, Tabitha. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Mrs. Marsh. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Mrs. Marsh. And good morning, Madeline. Where are you? There you are. We say Titch held the nails. 27 years full-time teaching, I haven't met a child like Madeline. She is frightened to talk. Uh, I haven't seen her looking as if she's going to talk either. It's as if she has closed her lips and they are glued together. Was it Jess? No, it wasn't Jess. Was it? Tom? Madeline isn't shy. She will grin, she will come up to me and smile and show me things. So there is no, no real timidity as regards relationships. It seems to be a timidity of talking. I do think she could be isolated. She is going to need to speak to her friends. If they get no response from her, or maybe just her pointing or taking their hand, that won't be enough in the future. Hi, Mad. It makes me feel anxious for the future for her, it makes me worry about her. She just runs the risk of just closing herself in and, and not, not mixing, just isolating herself even more. You know, not, not have friends not go to university, not have a job where she needs to interact with people. If I look that far ahead, I, I feel, I see an unhappy person and so I feel sad to see 
yeah, I'd see an unhappy person if I look that far ahead. As selectively mute children get older, their problems can become more severe. Robert Gibson is nine years old and has an anxious personality. I didn't turn it on, it's already... But unlike Madeline, Robert is able to talk in front of the camera. Yep, and then I went on James's new game. In his case, the overwhelming fear of speaking is specifically related to school. Anything to do with school, he just freezes, basically. Um, he goes expressionless, won't speak, and, um, you know, it's just... Well, it's, it's just a real problem because um, so much of school demands communication of some kind, and he's just not taking part in it. Robert's real passion is sport, particularly football. But even on the pitch, he doesn't make a sound. Because we're not associated with school, Robert is able to speak to us. But as soon as he starts to talk about his problem, he becomes anxious. It's just, it's just, it make, it's fun. I don't like feel sad or anything. <laughs> is it difficult talking about it? Um, yeah, but. Why do you think that? Because it's a bit, makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm. And why do you feel uncomfortable about talking about it? That's because I don't usually like talking. Robert's mum is aware that very few people understand selective mutism. The way people see him is that um, he's just very stubborn and he doesn't want to cooperate and it's all it's controlling his behavior but um, <laughs> I don't think that is the case really his, um, I think he's his not in control of his own behavior I think his anxiety is controlling him okay. every, every morning as we get closer to, to school his body language com changes completely he goes silent in the car and as soon as we get out of the car, you can just see his, his little body tensing up and, and freezing up. And you can see a complete transformation in him. And when he enters the school gates, he's just like a, a completely different little boy. And it's heartbreaking to know he's not going to be able to say anything for the rest of the day. If he needs a drink of water, he won't ask to have a drink of water. If he needs to go to the toilet, he won't put his hand up to ask to go. So we just worry every day how he muddles through each day. Hannah, pack lunch. Ebony pat lunch. Robert's silence presents a real challenge for his teacher. Rob's school dinner? He will not talk to me. He never has uttered anything. So I try to give him the opportunity in my questioning in lessons where he can answer me. But in the end I have to rephrase the question where basically he has to use his head for all the, you know, for gesture and sort of nodding yes or no. Can we draw 59? and 119 centimetres on that piece of paper. Can we? No. What could we divide by? Write it down there, what you think we could make this to a scale. To help Robert communicate in class, his teacher has given him a whiteboard. I'm not all that keen, in some ways, using the whiteboard because there seems to be that pause and the whole of the class are sort of waiting. Is Rob going to write the answer down? Where do you think they've gone, Rob? Any idea? 
right down where you think they might be. Where might they be? You wait and there's a silence as you hear the pen going across the whiteboard and it comes up and it's silence again. And then the children obviously will indicate themselves, you know, sort of nod, oh yes, he's got the right answer. Has so he got it? Let's have a look. Exactly. Let's find out what happened. Have you ever heard him speak? Never. Not a word. Unless... I, can, I only heard him laugh before, or sneeze, or cough. They're the only time he ever makes even a noise. There's obviously something wrong with him. We're scared or frightened. It's like there's a problem with him. But you don't know what that is because he won't tell us. <laughs> he won't even say the shortest words like he, even, or even air. That's what your post is going to go on. So, when I said we make things, to so stick on it, not the He's not the, um, the boy everyone wants to be friends with, I wouldn't have thought, because they know they can only get a limited amount out of him. When he goes to secondary school, the big worry is, is bullying. I think he'd be the sort of person that kids might bully, because he won't talk back. You know, as a parent, you, you obviously, you're, you know, you want your kids to live a fulfilled life. And that's really the, the, the worry that he won't find a partner, he won't find sort of happiness really. The worst nightmare would be major mental health problems, um, you know, and you know, leading to something awful happening. Robert's parents are so worried about him, they are now contemplating a controversial treatment to try and end his silence.